and let's come to another very important problem that is anxiety because we'll talk about later about anti anxiolytic drugs so let's deal with anxiety what is anxiety and is it is every anxiety should be pharmacologically treated or not first what, what is anxiety and of course i would like that uh, we should differentiate it with phobias also so you heard of these anxieties and phobias so let's be doctor everyone knows what is anxiety but how you really put for example just before the exam you are too much worried about the exam do you think that anxiety should be uh, reduced by drugs or no? no okay, I tell you a simple trick. No, just before because anxiety may be physiological or pathological. Anxiety is the real engine of life. Some anxiety should be there so that you achieve your goal, uh, you reach to your. But that should be physiological anxiety. And of course, what is pathological anxiety? That you become so much anxious that your performance goes down. Let me make a simple graph, just a minute, uh, look. What really happens that as your anxiety goes up, if you are, this is, the red line is anxiety and this is performance. As your anxiety goes up, your performance also goes up. This is good. Is that right? As usually it happens with most of the students, as exams are coming near, they're getting more anxious and concerned about the exam, and the performance also start getting up. Is that right? That is normal. But as anxiety keeps on going up, at certain point where you cannot handle the anxiety, where you do not handle, you are unable to handle the anxiety and stress, anxiety suddenly goes up, and performance suddenly goes down. This is the pathological depart. Is that right? That is why when we in many companies they say that uh, we want a person to work for us who can work under stress. It means that person should have good capacities to handle the stress because person who cannot handle the stress even a little anxiety will take the performance down. Person who has a very strong skills to handle the stress, anxiety goes very high and performance also goes very high. So at which point really they depart? It depends on how, you, what are your capabilities to handle the stress and anxiety. Is that right? So may, am I really clear? Now, uh, so there are some people on the job, you put them on a job and give them a little demanding situation, a stressful situation and their performance goes down, right? Maybe they, one of the management is that they should take low, low stress jobs. I remember one of my friends, he went for the interview and the boss asked that uh, we want a person who will work under stress. He says, yes, I'm that person. I've, you have to give me stress to work. If you don't stress me, I don't work. <laughs> right? <laughs> anyway, that was a sad part of the concept that there are some people, they say we work under stress. Uh, they, Actually, working under stress maybe is not a big thing. Keep on working under stress is a real thing. There are some people don't work when there's no stress. That is a sad thing. Anyway, let's come back. The point which I wanted to highlight as a doctor, you must be clear about anxiety, that every anxiety feeling does not need to be treated, right? And every patient with anxiety does not need to be treated by the drugs. Sometimes they just to be uh, they need behavioral therapy or psychotherapy to learn better skills to deal with the stress. Is that right? Many times it is advisable that a patient who comes with anxiety, you give them anxiety for a short time. But meanwhile, some psychotherapy or some supportive therapy should be done so that they handle their stress better way. You cannot be on anti anxiolytic drugs like diazepam. You should not take it for a lifetime. You have to take it for a short time. Am I clear? Uh, one of the, there are so many good definitions of anxiety. One of the definition of generalized anxiety is when anxiety is uh, exactly how we define. Who will tell me? Then I will tell. What is the anxiety? Pathological anxiety. I mean, pathological anxiety, which should, which needs to be treated. 
it was this discussion that how to differentiate pathological and pathological. What is pathological anxiety? When you really feel your patient need to be treated. Patholo path uh, pathological anxiety is uh, when patient has a generalized feeling of apprehension that something is going wrong or about to be wrong. Generalized feeling. I will explain what is really meant by this by an example. Patient has a generalized feeling of apprehension with hyperactive autonomic nervous system. This is very important part of component. Many people in anxiety develop tachycardia, sweating, tremors. You get it? Even you must be familiar with some people who develop diarrhea near the exams. That is hyperactivity of parasympathetic nervous system. Some people develop more frequency of urination and anxiety, stress. But very common symptoms of anxiety are tremors, tachycardia, sweating. That is hyperactivity of sympathetic nervous system. Right? So, what I am saying that what is real anxiety where you feel that your patient is having pathological anxiety and it must be treated. Uh, the class, one of the classical example where you should not miss the diagnosis person who says that he is worried about everything. For example, a mother who says that I am worried that uh, in the morning will my uh, child reach to the school safely. Once she calls the school and they say yes your child has reached safely then she is worried will he do well in the school. Then she is worried will he come back in home. And then she is worried after his home, uh, is he safe or working well or sleeping well? And all these thoughts reduces her quality of life and even sometimes quality of life of the child also. Then it is not normal anxiety. It's, it is not just uh, motherly concern. It is pathological anxiety, isn't it? Am I clear? Right. So with that, maybe when she thinks that the child has gone to school and maybe he is there or not and she has a developed tachycardia, mother and uh, tremors, then it is of course pathological. So a classical thing which happens in anxiety is that there is a generalized apprehension, right, with autonomic dysfunction. Usually the sympathetic overactivity but sometimes parasympathetic dysfunction may also be there, right. Yes, you had a question. Uh, I had a well uh, doubt. Is anxiety the same as nervous? Yeah. Okay, nervous? that's good. A layman layman term for anxiety may be nervousness. Yes, but some nervousness is normal. Okay. For example, if you are going to the, to first date of your life. I know it must have happened, but anyway, if young boy is going for the first date of his life and he is a bit nervous, you don't give him diazepam for that. Or do you? He needs few frequent date, dating and then he will become okay. Right? So, uh, nervousness may be physiological, may be pathological. It is a layman term we use that uh, he is developing nervousness and he is very nervous. Right? Some of the patient who develop nervousness may be full, uh, having pathological anxiety and some may not have pathological anxiety. For example, almost everyone before going for viva develops some degree of nervousness. However well he is prepared, oh, that is normal. But if someone is so nervous about the viva that uh, three days before his viva exam, he is so nervous that he opened the book and the words start jumping around, he cannot see and he cannot sleep and all this behavior and eventually one day before the exam he decides not to appear in the exam. He is so anxious. That is physiological or pathological? Pathological. Is that right? So the real art is to differentiate what is normal and what is abnormal so that you give drugs for the right indication. Is that right? Yes. 